So we're going to take his name and his face. And I found a word, a verse that contained both of those words. If my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. That's four things that we have to do. We have to humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. He will then do three things. I will hear from heaven. You want God to hear from heaven? You've got a, you've got a son on drugs. You want God to hear on, from heaven? You've got a business. You want God to bless. You want God to hear from heaven? If we do those four, he will do these three and will forgive their sins. Anybody need sins forgiven? And will heal their land. Anybody need healing in the land? So I want you to really pay close attention to this Sunday. And the next five sermons are going to be very important. And so the purpose of this series. Today I will not touch about on, on a name. But I'm going to explain to you the purpose of this series. And one of the purposes is to return fountain of truth. To genuine Pentecostal praise. Return, restore, remind the church, this church. You're a good church. A thousand pastors would kill, so to speak. And some of them maybe would, literally. To have a church like this. We are blessed. You are, you're nice people. You're, 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 you're good people, on the most part. We're, we're okay. But if we continue, listen to me, I want nobody, in fact, from now on in 218, I want no children playing with phones during the preaching. If, if you sit them down like we used to sit years ago, and they need to hear. I don't want one phone, one little video game going on. They either go to children's service or sit and listen to the preaching. It's only a 45-minute torture. All right? So, because we're going to teach our children to praise the Lord. We, we need to get back to Pentecostal, genuine Pentecostal praise. And if we continue the way we're going, in five or ten years, we're going to be one of these little churches. Swivel 15 minutes. Please don't take more than an hour and five minutes of my time because I've got lunch. I'm looking for a revival that will sweep from this side to this side. I'm looking for a Pentecostal praise because we are a Pentecostal apostolic church. Hallelujah. And some of you, and I'm just going to get on you for the next six weeks. Some of you have become accustomed to come to the house of the Lord, the house of praise, and not praise. It's like if the painter doesn't paint. It's like if the cook doesn't cook. And we come to a worship service, and we don't worship. And some of you men are cold and dry because you haven't lifted one hand since 2015. And you've got this little cross my leg and sit around. I'll, I'll, I'll sing. I'll, I'll mimic the words. I'll raise one hand. I'm talking about genuine Pentecostal praise. Now, this is not just fluff. There's two words. One of them is Pentecostal and one of them is apostolic. Apostolic, the word apostolic like the apostles, like the doctrine of the apostles. Ephesians 2.20, we're building upon the doctrine of the apostles. Apostolic refers more to the doctrine, to the foundation, to the biblical teaching of believing in one God. Repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, receiving the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking another tongue. Walking a separated life from the world. We are not of the world we are in the world but we are not of the world and if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in them that's apostolic and a lot of us that have been around for a long time we've got that down we've got that down but we have forgotten that we are pentecostal 
We, are, we have forgotten. Let me read to you the Pentecostal experience. Acts chapter 2 is a good place to start. On the day of Pentecost, from where we get the word Pentecostal, the word Pentecost means means 50 days after the Passover. On the day of Pentecost, all the Lord's followers were together in one place. Suddenly, there was a noise. There was a noise from heaven, like the sound of a mighty wind. It filled the house where they were meeting. It filled the house. Then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions. And a tongue came and settled on each person there. And the Holy Spirit um, took control of everyone. The Holy Spirit took control of everyone. And they began speaking whatever language was. The Spirit let them speak. Now, I have been around a long time. And I know what Pentecostal fluff is. I've been to services where it's all noise and it's all drum beats and it's shallow movement. I am not talking about that. I am talking about a praise that is, that is founded on word. I'm talking about a praise that is founded on teaching. I'm talking about, and I think we're okay in the teaching, I, I think. Now, there's a few people that'll backslide or, or they'll go to another church and they have no problem about the doctrine. They, they, they can baptize whatever name, they can believe in one God or three gods or three persons in one God, and they have no, no problem because over there they give the kids hamburgers at lunch or something like that. And, and if you do that, shame on you. Shame on you if you don't have any apostolic doctrine on which to stand. Not, not, you know, don't believe this. Every road takes you to Jesus. And every church does it. No, no. There's, there's a way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. It's not through being a good person. It's not through being nice. It's only through Jesus Christ. But I think that most of us have that down. What we've lost is the spirit and the liberty that comes with the spirit of praising the Lord when we come together. And I would like to take this time to apologize to a lot of our visitors. Because if you have to come in and find out and figure, are these people Pentecostal or not? They kind of look, but then about 40 of the men haven't moved since last Halloween. You know what? Now, you say, Pastor, you're getting on the men. You're lucky I came here. No, I'm not. You're lucky you came here. It is a privilege to praise the Lord. Come on, gentlemen. Don't tell me that you don't have emotions. I have seen you watch football games and baseball games and soccer games. You'll get up off the couch. You'll throw your drink. You'll scream at your wife if she walks across the TV right when they're about to catch the football. You, you're, you're there. Have you ever seen 10 or 12 men watching a Super Bowl game? Man, there's electricity there. And that's okay. I have no problem with that. But why when you come to church do you turn into an ice sculpture? Why do you cross your arm? You know why? Because you have lost the spirit of God. And we need to get back to Pentecostal praise. And my friends that visit us, if you have to come in and say, are these Pentecostal? People should know we're Pentecostal the minute they drive into the property, the minute they see your smile, the way you walk into church, the way you come into God. Come, praise the Lord, magnify. I was glad. I was glad. I was not sad. I was glad. I wasn't moody. I wasn't in a bad attitude. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Why do we come to the house of the Lord? We come to praise. You say, I'm not emotional, pastor. If you would have won the $485 million lottery last night, you'd be dancing in the street in your calzones. That's Greek word. Hallelujah. But you know what we look like sometimes? We look like these two up here. They're good guys. They're, they're, they're good guys. They work. They, they might even tithe in October. Who knows it? But there's something missing from that experience. They, don't please, don't just come and sit here at church. We are a Pentecostal church. And the way this started was with a move of the Holy Ghost. Where they were sitting, the power of God came in. Now, 
for those of you who know the Bible, I know that 1 Corinthians chapter 14 corrects the church of Corinthians because all they did during their services was speaking in tongues. And there was no word. There was no revelation. There was no message. And there was no written Bible as we have it. Paul was going to write to them the letters that now we have in our Bible. And so he says, look, you, you can't just sit there and speak in tongues all service. Somebody has to give you a word. And if there's no word, pray so that somebody will interpret the tongues so that you'll get a message. So I know that. But we don't even have to worry about that. Because before we slow down the church of Corinthians, we have to resurrect the church of fountain of truth. I'll tell you something. I'd rather hold a crazy man than have to resurrect a dead man. Don't stare at me that way. Praise God. Worship the Lord. You say, well, pastor, right now is the time to hear the word of God. And what were you doing when we were singing and praising? When only 12% or 15% come to the altar and the rest of you are back there like this, God is moving, God is healing God, and you're sitting like that, like saying, oh, they'll get over it right now. It's almost time for offering, and then we'll get out of here. Then I can go watch the game. I can go to the beach. I can go do whatever you do. Why don't you praise the Lord with Pentecostalism? We are Pentecost. Now, like I told you, like I told you, I've been to churches. Or all it is is fluff and running around and hollow screaming. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about genuine praise. To, the, 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 the other purpose is to turn our face towards the name of our Lord with heartfelt praise. They were... They were in a house, Acts 4. Show your mighty power, they told the Lord. As we heal people and work miracles and wonders in the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they had prayed, the meeting place shook. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and bravely spoke God's message. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me go back to, to Genesis. I, I made a mistake. Wrong page. You guys are praising me out of the sermon. To turn our face towards the name of the Lord with heartfelt praise. Genesis 32. Jacob comes before God. And he says, I have seen God face to face. And I am still alive. So he named the place Peniel. That's what the word Peniel means. Face of God. And he was there in, in, this, ex, in this experience with God. Facing God. I have seen God face to face, and he called it Peniel. And we need to get this down from our hearts, brothers and sisters. We, when, when we come in to sing, you need to sing. Say, I sing ugly. We know, but we don't mind. You know, I'm the quiet type. No, you're not. Ask your wife. You're not the quiet type. Go out there with the guys. You're not the quiet type. And it's all right. But why do, why do we leave emotion outside? Why? We are an emotional being. And we serve a real God. And when you come face to face with God, it is a time to give heartfelt praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the other thing we want to cover in this series, and this is very important, to create Praise atmospheres conducive to the supernatural. Let me ask you a question. Do you want God to move in our services? Do you want God to heal in our services? Do you want God to baptize your children in our services? Do you want God to, to lift up your spirit in our services? Do you want God to touch you in our services? Well, we have to learn to create an atmosphere that is conducive to the supernatural. God will go where he is called. He's omnipresent. He's in the car. He's in the field. He's in Colton. He's all over the world. God is. But his energy, his, his, um, his hand, his movement goes where people praise him and we need to we need to create an atmosphere of praise you know 
during this time that I've been preparing this, I was thinking about Slover and the Civic Auditorium. And I'm not going to call out the names to not embarrass anybody. But I remember some of you. I remember I'd be preaching. And there were some young ladies taken up by the Spirit. And then at the altar come, they would come already speaking in tongues, already praising God. Their faces would glow with the presence and with the glory of God. And you get one on fire, you get two on fire, you get another one on fire. All of a sudden, you've got something going where two or three are gathered in my name. I'm going to be right there with them. And then, and then the person that's sitting next to you just like this, all of a sudden says, wow, something's happening here. Have you ever seen seen two or three people standing on the sidewalk looking up what does everybody else do they look up and then the three that started it as a joke are looking at the people who are now looking up because people like to do what other people do and let me tell you if somebody walks into our church and sees our men praising Yes, the company owners and the fathers and the managers and the supervisors and the guys who make over 100000 a year and people who, who know how to manage and build and sell. And, uh, and they see the lawyers and the doctors and they see the nurses and they see the business owners worshiping God. They say, wow, if he can do it, if the teacher can do it, if the college professor can do it, wow, what am I? These people have something real. And we create an atmosphere of the moving of the waters. The Bible says that all the people, all the sick people that would bring them out by the pool. And they, were, they didn't have hospitals. They, they might have, but they were very um, uh, just uh, grassroots. And, and they'd set them out there to, to get some sun to die, to dry. But every so often, the Bible says, an angel would come and he would stir the waters. He would move the waters. And the, I don't know why it happened, why it's recorded. The first one who got into the water was healed. And that time Jesus went and he told that man, do you want to be healed? He says, yes, but when the water moves, I drag myself over. By the time I get there, somebody's already in there and I don't have anybody to take me. And Jesus said, don't worry, I, and he, Jesus healed him because Jesus is the moving of the waters. And it is, the point is this, we have to get the waters moving. We've got to get the spirit moving. We've got to get the action going. We've got to praise God. And, I, and listen to me, I'm having a minister's meeting after church today. All the ministers, ordained ministers and deacons are going to go there. And next Sunday, next Sunday, if you don't know how to worship, I want you to watch our ministers because they're going to teach you how to worship during service. Well, that's a lukewarm praise. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, put something into it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are hungry for a service that doesn't end? How many of you are hungry for a service that merges into the Spanish? And I want Brother Nat running to me and saying, Pastor, we've got fights in the parking lot. People are crashing next to another fountain of truth. I want you to look at what I see almost every Sunday. This is what I see almost every Sunday. This is you, fountain of truth. And I want to get us back to Pentecostal service. You say, you say, well, I don't really like that. Well, you're in the wrong church. You came to the wrong house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when we begin the movement of the waters, when, when things begin to circulate, come on, some of you came from a church that there was only 40 of you there, but you used to worship God. You used to worship Him the Spirit. You used to speak in tongues during church. You used to be alive, but you came here and you saw a nice stage and great music and, uh, and more or less good preaching and you sat back and put it on cruise control and you've been in there for nine years. And I, for one, am tired of seeing people who say they're apostolic, say they're Pentecostal, say that, well, I received the Holy Ghost. When? Well, back in 1939, well, a good new dose wouldn't hurt you this morning. 
You know what I'm concerned about, Brother Ben? I'm concerned about that a lot of men in this church don't have the Holy Ghost and they don't care to receive it. We are apostolic that believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Hey, guess what happened? It says all the people gathered around them. There was about 120. And when the Holy Ghost came down, the tongues fell on their faces are on the heads and they begin to speak in another tongue and they begin to worship God and made noise and all the people gathered around and some said these people are drunk do you think do you think they said get your glasses out of here you dead guy do you think do you think that the, the people thought they were drunk because they were like this and you're real good when the baby begins to cry I'll take him out you want to get out of church. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. You're dead. You're frozen. And today, God wants to baptize you. God wants to change that. They thought, they thought, the church we belong to, the church from where we stem, the roots of our church, the people around it, these guys are drunk. How does a drunk behave? Well, some of you ought to remember. How does a drunk behave? You're going crazy. You're talking nuts. You're walking around. Little girls with mini skirts stand up on tables and dance, showing their behinds. They don't care because they're drunk. And you used to do that for the world. You used to do that for the devil. But now that you got saved, you got paralyzed. Or did you get too educated, Mr. Doctor? Did, did you get too educated now for Jesus? You need a baptism of the Holy Ghost and you need to help us create. You need to help us create. You need to help us create. You need to help us get a movement that is conducive to the supernatural. I don't care who walks in here. If their wife is healed from cancer, they will begin to weep. I don't care how rich the person is. If their son is liberated from drugs, and that is going to happen when we create an ambience and a worship of praise. Come on, fountain of truth, apostolic, Pentecostal, tongue-talking, Devil chasing church. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, brush off the cobwebs from your armpits. Raise an arm. Even if 20 spiders walk out, clean it out. We're here to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You say, you say, I don't want to look nuts. Well, I want to make it to that the ones who aren't worshiping will look nuts. And visitors, again, I apologize if you've had to figure out if these people are Pentecostal or not. They come and they sit down, they hear the things, they look and say, is this Pentecostal? Well, this guy's dead. Hi, I'm Jim Lazarus. How are you? You've been there already for four days. And they come and sit by you. And they look like they walked into a refrigerator because it's so cold. And then you get a whole cold roll and then a whole cold section. I'm going to get the torch of the Holy Ghost and I'm going to melt that down. <laughs> Hallelujah. This, this, isn't, this isn't my idea. This isn't just a thing I came up with. God wants his church to worship him. And if you don't praise him, he will raise up stones to do so. He will raise. Listen. Listen, are you going to allow somebody that's been converted for three months to outpraise you that's been here for 30 years? You have more experiences, testimonies, healings. God has saved you. God has liberated you. God has done stuff with your children. I wanted to pop out of my skin when I saw about five of my grandchildren praising the Lord. Now the little ones, they were playing, I know, but the other ones, they were feeling something. And I looked over and said, yes, God. Yes, God. And then I see Tim come up here with his baby. Dads, teach your children. Grab him with one arm. Raise your other arm. And even if he's one or two, tell him, son, this is the way you praise the Lord. Your daddy's not crazy. He's saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Now, you all know that I'm a pastor of order. I don't like disorder. 
That's why we start on time and try to end on time. But I told God, God's services are open-ended now. And what happens if the Spanish come? Well, they can join us and say, Alleluia, in Spanish. And what about the parking? We'll let somebody worry about that. Get here early so you won't get the dirt. You know what I mean? Or everybody pay their tithe and we'll put a, we'll put a parking lot. I promise you, if everybody pays it, oh no. Everybody pays their tithe this month and next month, we'll put a parking lot. Everybody pay their tithe. So as long as you don't see a parking lot, it's these guys aren't paying their tithes. I'm serious. It's time for you to get serious. You want, you want your friends walking out here? I went to that church. I didn't even understand it. At first it was kind of crazy, but then I went to the doctor and he said, I don't have any cancer anymore. And then my son, he was going to get 20 years and he only got one year and he's only going to do six months. And my daughter, all of a sudden she called, she came back. What happened? The church began to move the waters. The church began to move the waters. And listen, listen how easy it is to preach. And I've got to be fair to you this morning because this morning there was more worship. I bet some of you said, this year I'm going to worship the Lord. Please don't let that dry by Valentine's. I'm serious. Either be a Pentecostal apostolic or find a place where you can hear a mouse burp during the service. Some of you like this. Some of, you, some of you have been praying for me to preach like this. Some of you say, some of you have been concerned that if we go on like this another 10 years. When's the last time you had to go change clothes? Because you were sweaty. I got sweaty. When? During the service. Well, what'd you do? Marathon? No, I just worship like a Pentecostal. When was, the, when was the last time your husband had to come? Come on, honey. We got to go. The kids, lunch. It's already going to start Spanish service and you're still, you, you just slap him and say, whoo, I'm going to keep worshiping. Or grab him and pull him down with you so he'll worship with you. Man, I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. Eight hours of football. Eight hours of Netflix. Eight hours of play. No prayer. Of course you're going to come in here dead and dry. And then, and then the, the team's got to do something to wake you up. And then I've got to feed you a little bit. And that is, we got to go home now because it's lunch. And that cycle repeats itself. And you're dying inside. And God loves you. And he wants to baptize you with a fresh spirit. Because the only way we can worship God in the spirit is to have the spirit in us god is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth hallelujah now if you read that verse in john 4 24 there's two words spirit this isn't on this on the notes and i said there's two words, spirit. God is spirit. In the kingdom, says God is a spirit, but really in the original, God is spirit. Capital S. God is spirit. He's a spirit. He's the spirit of God. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit, lowercase s. What does that mean? That God is a spirit. And you need to worship God with your spirit, with a lowercase s. And when you turn your spirit, your, the face of your spirit toward the face of his spirit. There will be a connection, an electromagnetic connection, a burst of energy, a source of light, a, a word of revelation, an uplifting, hallelujah, to lead your family, to stand in the face of temptation, to worship at home, hallelujah. And here's what's gonna happen. Friday night. Saturday, 6 o'clock, and the wife is going to say for the umpteenth time, Hun, didn't pastor say we're supposed to go over the notes? It's already Saturday. We're going to get new notes next Sunday. You still haven't do it. Oh, yeah, I don't have time. A hundred excuses, and you won't do it. But then I'll get the call in 10 years when, you're, when your kid's on drugs, when your kid's going to jail, when you're 14, got a 13-year-old pregnant. Because you refused to take the word to your kitchen table 
and be the dad and the pastor and the leader because it takes spirit to do that. And if you won't even worship God with choirs, music, lights, haze, pastors, preachers, ministers, just walk by Brother Ben's shadow, you'll get the Holy Ghost. And if that doesn't work, Louis Gutierrez will scream in your ear until you speak it. You tell him to get away in tongues. And if, and if you can't raise, and I'm, not, I'm getting on the men, I know. Because you're the pastor. So kids, young people, watch your dad and worship like him. And if he's not here, watch me and worship like me. Oh. Show your mighty power as we heal people. Look at that. Look at, look at what happens when the mighty power shows. We'll heal people and work miracles and wonders in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That's what happens when the, when the church moves. After they had prayed, the meeting place shook. When's the last time this building shook? And if it should get an earthquake, Los Angeles, 7.5. Why don't we make it shake? If that building shook, why can't this building shake? You know why that building shook? It's because the people inside it shook. And in order for this building to shake, the people inside this building are going to shake. And it's not just to make the building move. It's so healings and power and wonders will be done in the name of Jesus Christ. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and bravely spoke God's message. In fact, that's the whole premise for creation. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning... God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void, empty, confused, dark, until something happened. The Spirit of the Lord began to move above the waters. And when the Spirit began to move, then came the word, let there be light. There cannot be word if there's no movement of the Spirit. And that's why I can fast all week and I can pray since four in the morning and I can prepare myself. But if there's nothing inside of you, that thing's just going to bounce back. And it was when the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon the waters. There's that movement. God is always moving. God is always moving. And if he would just, if we will call him down with thanksgiving and praise, it's not just to make noise. If all I want is noise, I'll go see the Los Angeles Chargers. They used to be from San Diego anyway, in my heart, just, just a little bit. If that's what I, I've been in stadiums filled with noise. I've been in places with five, ten thousand people, and the president of the United States walks in, and that thing begins to rumble. And people walk into a Pentecostal church, and four rows behind them and in front of them to the side are dead. That's got to change. And it's got to change not just to make noise. Not just to run around with shallowness, but so God will move. And so as the Spirit moved upon the waters, upon the face of the waters, the Spirit moved. And it was that moving of the Spirit. Whew, the moving of the Spirit. Then God said, let there be. And there was. Hallelujah. He said, Pastor, are you upset? No. I'm just Pentecostal. <laughs> they really are nice guys. But they belong in a mass someplace. To respond to the preached word with passion. When the pastor or preacher is preaching, keep playing that organ, somebody. Just keep doing it. Magic, yes, do it. Find you. You were over here last year. So the rapture. 
Listen. When the word of God is being preached, of course we need to listen. I've even preached that you can't be screaming while you're eating. I know that. I know that. There's got to be a, a measure of listening, a dimension of intake, of, of digesting what is being said. That's good. But here's what happens. There are moments in the preached word of God where the church must respond. I was in Colombia years ago. And I was going to preach that night. And one of the ministers got up. And during that season of my life, I was memorizing the 53rd chapter of Isaiah in Spanish. Every month you need to memorize some scripture. Right now I'm memorizing the 32nd Psalm in Spanish. And I was memorizing, and I still remember it with a, with a touched heart. And the brother got up there, and all he did was quote a verse from the 53rd chapter. I still remember it. Del trabajo de su alma verá y será saciado. And I was sitting behind him. That thing hit me like, like a shock. You know why? Because I had put the word in my, in my mind, in my heart, in my soul. And when he spoke it, it connected to me. And I said, whoa. And the less word you have, the less is going to connect. And there's got to be a response. I am not looking for cheerleaders. I've been doing this more, almost 40 years. I don't need cheerleaders. I don't need somebody just to cheer me. I don't do that. But you need to respond to the word. When it hits you, when it speaks to you, when it uplifts you, when it exhorts you, when it comforts you, you need to respond with a, to the word of God. So if I'm standing up here, how do I perceive if you have faith of the word of God? Well, we find that in Acts 14, 8. In Lystra, there was a man who had been born with crippled feet and had never been able to walk. The man was listening to Paul speak. And there he was. Talk about need. When Paul saw that he had faith in Jesus and could be healed, so he looked straight at the man. How, did, how does Paul see faith? You can't see faith. The King James Version says that, that Paul perceived that the man had faith. How did, per, how did Paul perceive that the man had faith? Faith is, is invisible. I'll tell you how. It's not that hard. While these two are doing what they do and you do, while Paul was preaching, that man was going, oh yeah, oh yeah, mm-hmm, oh yeah. Yeah, I believe that. And Paul saw that and said, your faith is going to heal you. And the man who hadn't walked for a long time because of the way he responded, Paul perceived or Paul saw. And Paul healed him right there in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And God can heal any paralysis that's here today when the word is being preached. Now, I know it's 1130. And I don't care. I don't care. I have a meeting at 12 in 29 minutes so I can preach for 28 and then run. I, and I know this is going on live stream, but found of truth doesn't hide is good, bad, or ugly. And if you're out there criticizing us, look at yourself. Hello, my friends. Brother Ben, I get so, I preach all over the place. And I've been, the Tim was with me in Ecuador. I'll tell you this testimony. I, I get up, I pray. There was going to be about 15,000 people in that Coliseum that evening. And I prayed and I, I didn't have a message. I really didn't. I had notes, but I didn't have a message. And then I got sick that day. So when they came for me that evening, I'm shaking with fever. And uh, they're trying to be nice to me, so they sit me in the front where the air condition hit me because it's so hot. And if we turn the air off, the guys in the back will get to the church medium rare. It's hot. So I just didn't say anything, and I'm just freezing there. So I get up there, and, and I'm sick, and I've got fever. And worse, I don't know what to preach. I've got a paper in front of me, but that wasn't the message. I knew that. I was going to preach it if nothing came. 
And they're, they're raising the offering, and I don't know what I'm going to preach. And there's 15,000 people saying, El hermano Valverde va a predicar, el hermano Valverde. You go to Colombia, they really like me over there. Most of them. And they say, now we have with us from the United States. And they give me this huge presentation. And the preacher doesn't know what he's going to say. And I'm sick. And I get up there and I stand and I greet them. And to buy five minutes, I say, Joseph is going to sing a song. Joseph, Absalom's brother. Where's Absalom? I don't know where you are, Absalom, but it's his brother. And Joseph gets up and the musicians move and they said, no, 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 no. And he, and he stands up there and he sings a cappella. Tim, you were there. You were there. Were you there? Am I saying the truth? Well, at least say amen so that they'll know I'm not lying. And Joseph begins to sing a Spanish song. Jesus es mi rey soberano. And the place settled with 15,000 people. And with his song, they became silent. And I don't see things. I don't see flying angels or, you know, God doesn't talk to me. through the, To me. But I saw a mist. <laughs> a mist around that auditorium. And in that moment, the Lord healed me. And he gave me the message. Title, scripture, in two minutes. And when I got up there to greet and begin, in five minutes, that place was praising God and they couldn't be quiet for 17 minutes. It's on video. Ask Ernie for it. And I've been to, I've been to those stadiums and I've been, to, I've been to churches with 40 people that are hungry for a move of God. You see, they don't have everything you have here. Let me tell you just plain out, fountain of truth, you are a good church, but you're spoiled. You are spoiled. Spank, spank, you are spoiled. You know you're going to come in here and hear good music. You wouldn't go back to your old church where there was a little guitar with only five strings and the guy playing it only had three fingers. You're spoiled. No matter who preaches here, you get word, you get fed. In fact, you're like the rich kid who pushes aside the filet mignon. I want ice cream. And there's, there's churches starving for, for everything you have. And you can come late to church, cross your arms for the time you are here, leave early and say, I punched in and I'm punching out. And miss out on the whole Pentecostal experience. And I've been to churches with 40 people. And I can't even preach because the presence of God is flowing because they're so hungry for God. But you're sitting here thinking, which in and out is closer? If I go through the two tents west or if I go east? Wow, that hit somebody. I, that, that was from the Spirit. <sighs> you know how I sometimes say, will you give me three minutes? Will you give me an hour? Two people. Meet me in my office. I'll finish there. <laughs> Worship and praise defined. I'll go fast. Worship is a lifestyle. It means being God conscious. Praise is an action, an exercise. But praising can be considered part of worship. So if I use during this series praise or worship, when I use the word worship, I'm referring to the praise that we do in church because that praise is part of our worship. You understand? Praise is easy. Like if I like his shoes, no, maybe his. I like his shoes. If I'm going to praise his shoes, I'm going to say those are nice shoes. Those are different. Are they your wives or yours? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. My father-in-law used to do that all the time. Come with a nice, nice shirt and he'd tell me, no hay de hombre. But, but I'm not saying that to you. I've got to be nice to him. He's my dead man at FTC. And when you, if I'm going to praise his shoes, I'm not going to go, oh, shoes, oh. No, I'm going to say they're nice. They're beautiful. They're different. They're colorful. They're strappy. They're, they're, they're white at the bottom and pink at the top with black things going across. I'm going to praise him. And when we come to praise the Lord, it's not just, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
judge. No, 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 no. Tell him why you love him. Tell him, explain to him, you're wonderful. You're a mighty God. You're a prince of peace. You saved me. You healed me. You hear my prayer. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I really do. I'm going through problems, but that's not going to stop me from praising you. I'm sick. I've got surgery coming. My boss told me one more week of work. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to praise you anyway. And so uh, worship is a lifestyle. I know that means God conscious, but praise is an action. And quickly here, we've got to praise. The praise actions is with speaking. And when I was putting this together, I said there's a lot of newcomers who don't know how to worship or praise. So we have to teach him with the word of God. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, it's not the new converts that need it. It's the old ones that need to be reminded that they have to use their mouth when they come to church. And that's not gossip in the lobby. That's not talking about your favorite team out in the parking lot. God gave you that mouth, yes, to eat frijoles. God gave you that mouth to, to, to feed yourself. God gave you that mouth for many things. But the main reason I have this mouth is to praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Open my lips. And, and if you haven't been able to praise God with your mouth, you notice that it is God that opens the lips. And then my mouth shall show forth the praise. So if you, if you just can't for whatever reason, and maybe you've gone through stuff, and you know, I'd like to, God, but I can't, tell him this prayer. Open my lips, God. Open my lips. And when you open my lips, then I'm just going to praise. I'm going to show forth thy praise with my mouth. Psalms 63, 3. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Because thy loving kindness, you know what that is? That's his mercy. Let me tell you something. Promise I'll be done in five minutes. There's two things that we get from God that we don't, we need to praise of. One is his grace. Grace is when he gives me what I do not deserve. And his mercy. Mercy is when he does not give me what I do deserve. So I get things that I don't deserve and I don't get things that I do deserve. Those are his mercies. And so because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. I wonder if there's about 50 lips. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. How are you going to receive the Holy Ghost with speaking in tongues if you don't open your mouth? In fact, one of the best ways to receive the Holy Ghost is to start praising Him with your lips in your mouth. And then the Holy Ghost just takes over and you start speaking another time. But God will never, ever feel somebody with the Holy Ghost that's like this. They really are good guys. One of them is, I think, related to me. And the other one's mom makes the best pupusas. But you notice what's on their chest. It's the church logo. With my hands. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands towards thy holy oracle. You, when you raise your hands, that means something. If we have forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a strange God, that was an exercise of lifting or stretching out hands towards a, a deity. And they're asking forgiveness here. They say, God, if, if we've forgotten your name and if our hands were stretched out not to you, let me tell you something. You stretch out your hands all the time. There's no arthritis problem. It's a spiritual problem. And do you know how disheartening it is 
For a pastor of a Pentecostal church, when we say, let's raise our hands and worship the Lord, and 70% of the people don't raise their hands. You don't have arthritis. You're dead inside. You forgot who baptized you. You forgot that you're reaching out to deity. And it's, it's a part of a signal. It's God, I'm right here. I worship you. I praise you. I surrender. Oh, clap your hands. All you people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. So you raise up your hands and then you tell them, this is in your name. This is for you, Lord. And you get the hands. And you get the voice. And then you put the heart. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I'm going to praise you with all my heart. And when my heart goes, my mouth starts, my hands go up. When thou saidest, seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, thy face will I seek. Psalms 100. And, and on, 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 the, on your notes, it's in the King James Version. But I love the way it says it in, in another version. It says, on your feet now. Applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into His presence. Hallelujah. So, starting next Sunday, would you stand please? Yeah, I want you to go home talking about me today. Boy, he really got on us today.